You are now watching Black Pen, Red Pen. This video is not about how to teach you guys on how to add fractions or how to get the common denominators or things like that, right? But I will talk about how to make the fraction addition questions slightly more challenging. Well, in my words, it will be not boring, all right? Anyway, let me do this for you guys first. As we can see, these two fractions, they do not have the same denominators yet. So you see that this is 9, this is 2. The lowest common multiple of 9 and 2 is 18. So we need to make both of them equal to 18 on the denominator. And for the first fraction, we just need to multiply the bottom by 2, the top by 2, so 4 times 2 is 8. And for this one, we have to multiply the bottom by 9, the top by 9, which is 1 times 9, which is 9. And now, when the bottoms are the same, we can just keep the same on the bottom. 8 plus 9 is equal to 17, and this is it. 17 over 18, this is not reducible, that's it, right? So here is the deal. Well, if you guys look at, in my opinion, this is not interesting at all in the following sense. Because when you get the lowest common denominator, you can just multiply, for example, 9 with the 2, and 2 with the 9, right? So it wasn't that challenging. And also, when you properly add them up, the first result right here, 17 over 18, that was not reducible. So we kind of missed that chance to make it more challenging for the students, right? So here, let me give you guys what I would like. This is my more interesting, my preferred uh, fraction addition questions for my students. And of course, let's talk about the mathematics and I will show you guys an example of what I mean by all this. So this is what I want, all right? I want to have two fractions when, they, when we add it. So let's say I want to have a, o, uh, a over B plus C over D. Of course, D and B and D cannot be zero as usual, all right? And when I write this down, let's just assume that these two fractions are in the simplest form already. So I want to have a fraction addition equation in the following sense. First of all, this is my wish list. I want that the greatest common divisor or the greatest common factor of the denominators, namely B and D. The GCD of B and D, I don't want this to be 1. In another word, I don't want this to be co-prime. You see, 9 and 2, they were co-prime. So to get the LCM, it was pretty easy. You just multiply 9 and 2 together, you get 18. Right? That's boring, in my opinion. So I don't want the GCD of these two numbers to be 1. And also, I want to make this study more challenging. I don't want the GCD to be one of these. So in another word, I don't want the GCD to be B or to be D. Right? So these are forbidden. So what do I mean by that? I don't want a fraction to be something like this, like say 2 over uh, 15 and plus 1 over 5. Well, the GCD of 15 and 5 is exactly 5, right? So in my opinion, it's boring because I can just multiply the second fraction by 3 and I don't need to do anything with the first fraction. So that missed out the chance to make the students do, do more work. So <laughs> I don't like this neither. So this is the first condition, all right? And the second condition is the following. Once I add this one, these fractions up properly, I hope that the first result that we get is reducible, right? So I want A over B plus C over D to be reducible, right? At least for, you know, one time or two times, or depends on how you want to do it. But this is what I want, so that I can make the students to think hard and to train the students uh, harder to add the fractions, right? And let's just talk about addition first. So now, let me just give you guys an example of what I mean by all this. So here is an example of the fractions, addition questions that I think they are not boring, right? So let's look at 2 over 15 plus 7 over 10. This is one example right here. Okay, first of all, 2 and 15, of course, you cannot reduce that anymore. 7 and 10, you cannot reduce that anymore, so the fractions are in simplest form, so that's good. Now, 15 and 10, well, the GCD of 15 and 10, it's what? It's 5, right? So it's not 1, it's not 15, it's not 10. So notice, GCD of 15 and 10 is 5. The greatest common factor of these two numbers is 5. So I satisfy the first condition I want, right? And now, let's just add the fractions the proper way, the right way. I need to get 30 here, and then 30 here. 
For the first fraction, I need to multiply the bottom by 2, and of course do the same on the top. For the second one, I need to multiply the 3, right? On the top, you see this is 4, and then this is going to be 21. And now, when I add them up the proper way, on the denominator, you make it the same, and then 4 plus 21, that's 25. But, you see, 25 over 30, this is reducible, right? And I'm just going to use a blue pen to reduce this. We can divide the top by 5, divide the bottom by 5, so that you see that on the top is equal to 5, on the bottom is equal to 6. And this is the final answer, 5 over 6. And to me, this fraction addition question is not boring, right? Because you can actually make the students to do a lot of exercise on this. Okay, now the challenge is this. How can we be sure that to pick A, B, C, D to make this work? And of course, I just gave you guys an example, 2 and 15, 7 and 10, like that, right? Can you guys come up with more examples that satisfy these conditions, all right? And also, thanks to my former student, in fact, he was one of my first generation students, and he was from the Upper Bound program back at UC Berkeley. His name is Jian Li. Thanks to him, he pretty much did a computer program, and then uh, he listed out all, a lot of, I would say not all, a lot of the uh, fractions that satisfy these conditions. And I will have the link uh, in the description uh, for you guys, all right? So you guys can also check that out. And in fact, I got this from him as well. And the trouble is, it's really hard if you just want to just uh, pick A, B, C, D out of nowhere. For example, let's do one, all right? Um, Let's say I want to just, I don't know if this is going to work already. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not, but this is, I'm going to do this around the spot with you guys, right? Anyway, let's try, right? Let's try pi, which is 3, 14, right? Why not? Okay, so now let's say we add the bottom matters because I don't want them to be, uh, I don't want them to be co prime and then I don't want them to be multiple of one with the other whatsoever. And 14 is 2 times 7, so this number should have a 2 as a factor or 7 as a factor. Uh, let me make 7 as a factor, so let me pick 21, right? And I want to pick something on the top, and that's not reducible. Uh, let me just try 5. Why not? And I'm not sure if this is going to work or not, right? So don't judge me if it doesn't work. Anyway, over 42. So this is easy, right? But now the issue is, when I add 9 and 10 together, this is 19 over 42. Unfortunately, this is not reducible, and like this. So to me, this is not really interesting, right? So <laughs> this is perhaps the harder part is that, try to think about mathematical way so that when you add the fractions up this way, you can actually reduce it at least one time and then just get to this, right? Hopefully you like this much better because you have to think much harder and that's it.